Hello friends. So uh, in all these videos that we have gone through transformers, that's around 40, 42 videos. We have done a lot of learning about the transformer, right? We have done what is the construction, what is the operating principle, equivalent circuit of the transformer, losses of the transformer, testing of the transformer, etc, etc. We are always concentrated on the transformer as such. But then I have already, when I uh, had the second lecture, where I told you why transformers are so beneficial for us, I told you it was because that the transformer helps us to step up the voltage and transmit the volt, uh, power at the using the transmission lines and this would reduce the transmission line losses considerably. This was, this was one of the major applications of the transformer in the power sector. Right? But as of now, we are not done anything in a numerical uh, fashion, right? We are not uh, connected the transformer to a power system and done a numerical on there. So uh, we will do a numerical. It will be two parts. The first part is that uh, what we are going to see now in which we are not going to connect the transformer. In the second part, we will connect the transformer and then we'll compare the results. So what happens to the transmission line losses, etc. And how much of voltage reaches the load. Okay, all these things we will see. So let's start today's numerical. So this will be a two part numerical. So today will be the first part. And after I upload the next video, we will conclude this numerical. So in the numerical, they have told you that a single phase power system consists of a 480 volt 60 hertz generator supplying a load of ZL is equal to 4 plus 3J. This is the impedance of the load. And it is done through a transmission line of impedance Z line is equal to 0 0.18 plus J. 0 0.25 that means the resistance of the line is 0.18 and the induct or the reactance of the line is j.25 okay so they are asking what is the load voltage that is the load voltage across the load and what is the transmission line loss that is how much of power is lost in this transmission line now remember that this z line is 0.18 plus j.25 so this transmission line b might be uh, in kilometers and kilometers right but they have given the total impedance of the line from point a till it reaches the load from the generator till it reaches the load is 0 0.18 plus j.25. Okay, so this is the meaning of this thing. So I've already drawn the drawing here. So you are having a voltage source 480 angle 0. Let's take this voltage itself as the reference here. And it is connected through a transmission line, right? So this is the generator and this is the transmission line here till this point. And then you are having the load. Okay. So what is the load voltage? So clearly what will be the load voltage? The VL will be equal to the current through the load, which is IL, which I have marked here, IL, multiplied by the <coughs> impedance of the uh, load, which is ZL. Okay. So <coughs> ZL you already know, it is 4 plus J3. Okay. And IL you don't know. Okay. So what is the value of IL? So clearly what will be IL value equal to? This IL value will be equal to the voltage V of the generator divided by the total impedance seen by the generator divided by z total right so what is z total here the total impedance will be the impedance of the transmission line plus the impedance of the load because these two are connected in series fashion so this will be the total impedance of the line plus total impedance of the load so what is the total impedance of the line so let us write the value of z total here so z total will be equal to z line which is 0 0.18 plus j 0.24 this is Z line plus Z load. <coughs> so this is impedance of the load, which is 4 plus J3, right? It is 4 plus J3. So if you calculate this value, you will get it 4.18 plus J into 3.24. Okay, so this is the total impedance of the load. So let us now convert it into polar form. It is not necessary that you should convert into polar form, but then we can convert it into polar form anyway. So this is in the Cartesian form. So Z total in the polar form, will be equal to 5.29 angle 37.78 clearly it is an inductive system that is why you have got the impedance angle to be positive so this is the absolute value the total value which is root of 4.8118 square plus 3.24 square so this is amplitude so this is the advantage of using the polar form because you get the amplitude and in electrical case the rms value for current voltage etc and the angle with respect to the reference okay so this is with respect to this angle zero which we have se selected here so <coughs> this is z total right so that means from this uh, value you can write il to be equal to vg that is 480 angle zero divided by 
So this is two polar form. So it is very advantageous that we convert this also into polar. Divided by 5.29 angle 37.78, right? So this IL value here will be equal to 90.737 angle minus 37.78 amperes. Okay, so clearly you can see that this is overall it's an inductive system. That is why the current is having a magnitude RMS value of 90.737, and its angle is negative. This negative, this is actually the power factor angle. It's negative because current lags the voltage in the uh, inductive system, right? So with reference to the VG, the current is lagging by 37.78 degree. So this is the value of IL. So from this you can find the value of VL. To be equal to IL into ZL, right? Z load. So IL value is ninety point seven three seven angle minus thirty seven point seven eight. Okay, multiplied by ZL value is five point two nine angle thirty six point eight seven. Right. So from this you will get the VL value to be equal to four fifty three point seven angle. Minus 0.9 volt. So this is the RMS value of the load voltage, which is the. So I'll just write that. So VL is equal to 453.7, and what was VG value equal to? It was 470 volts, right? No, 480 volts. It's 480 volts. I hope I have not written 4. Yeah, 480 volts. So this is the value of VL. So you can clearly see VL is very much less as compared to VG. That means there is almost a loss of. 30 volts in this transmission system. So the voltage generated was 480 volts. You are not having any transformer. You are just transmitting that voltage through the transmission line. And by the time it reaches the load, the voltage falls to 453 volt, which is not a very good uh, thing. So you can find the loss in the voltage by subtracting these two and dividing it by 482. So that you can do. So what you can do, you can find the percentage loss in voltage. So, if you find this voltage, please put them in the comments below. This is how we make the uh, community more and more interactive, right? So, you do this numerical, so you can find this extra bit. You can put them in the comments below. So, it will give you also a satisfaction that you have done something extra. It will give me a satisfaction that I am having a very interactive audience. Why I am telling is this because in the Facebook page, which I post these numericals, what I have seen is that I request you to post the solutions. You can do the solution in your notebook. Take a photo and you can post them in the comments. But I found out that nobody is doing that. Okay, now this is a very early point in the channel. Also, we are hardly having around four thousand five hundred or six hundred subscribers, which is quite a bit when you consider that my channel only deals with electrical engineering. So we are having four thousand five hundred electrical enthusiasts who are interested in learning the subjects to follow. Another thing is that when I understand my audience is a very interactive. audience i also tend to work a lot more put more content especially in social media like facebook etc in which we can make the content more and more interactive so it is my request that you become more interactive in all these videos because before doing these numericals i post them in the facebook and that facebook channel is varun nair let us love in Engi let us love engineering you can find that link in the channel art also where i am having the links to my wordpress page and as well as the facebook group so you can join them And you can post your comments below, and that way we will have it bi-directional. So you will be interacting more. I will be getting more confidence. I will be putting more content. You again interact more. It's like a positive feedback loop. Okay, okay. So with all that, let us uh, move to the next part of the problem, which is which was finding the transmission line losses. Right. Next part is finding the transmission line losses. Now the transmission line losses. I am telling only about the transmission line. Now the losses are are only caused due to the Resistive element. So this being an inductance, okay. This is be this J point two four is a lumped inductance. An inductance does not uh, because in the ideal case it does not dissipate any power. The power dissipating component is this particular resistance, which is point one eight ohm. So the power is dissipated only across that point one eight ohm. So the power loss in the transmission line will be equal to I L square, okay, magnitude of I L square multiplied by Resistance of the transmission line, right? So this value will be equal to ninety point seven three seven whole square multiplied by point one eight. We are not taking the total impedance because the losses which are produced only by the resistive element. The losses of any element is represented by the resistive component, not by the inductive component. Okay. So into point one eight. So this value you will get to be equal to. Uh, 
90 point sorry 1484 watts okay approximately 14 so if you take this value to be 90.8 so this will be 1484 watts so this i will just write it here the transmission line losses are caused due to the line resistance so that is why we take it as 0.182 okay so this is 1484 this is considerable amount of watts right this is around 1.5 kilowatts is wasted power generated is wasted in the transmission line and the rest of the thing is coming to the load okay so with that let us conclude this video in the next video we will connect two transformers one in the source end to step up the voltage and another in the load end to step down the voltage so that becomes a manageable voltage okay and we will again compare what is the load voltage and what is the transmission line losses you should already know the load voltage will not be very much different as the source voltage and the transmission line losses also will reduce because we are going to use the transformer so if you like this video please like share and subscribe to the channel please do recommend these videos with your friends if they are having any difficulty in understanding these topics or any other topic like engineering circuit analysis dc machines and synchronous machines okay which are already available in this channel so please do share these videos because only if you share the videos and the videos reach a larger number amount of audience the vision of the channel to give quality education to a larger amount of audience for free will be fulfilled okay so till i see you in the next video it's me varun signing off and i do strongly recommend you joining the facebook page also in which i upload a lot of uh, numerical handouts which you can use to refer the you can use to understand the concept much better okay so till i see you in the next video it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you